Now, I never really understood why YouTubers would turn off comments because I don't know about them, but I really enjoy reading and responding to all the things that you guys write in my videos. Like in my Don't Listen to Warren Buffett video, Randy recently commented, how has your tech purchase been the last couple months? S&P has been doing just fine while tech is down. That's why you diversify. And it's your lucky day, Randy, because we want to talk about how my tech stocks are doing, if I'm properly diversified, and whether I should sell off my tech positions right now. I'm not sure if Randy over here watched the Warren Buffett is wrong video because in it, I talk about how the S&P 500 isn't as diversified as people think it is. I mean, this is VOO, the S&P 500 ETF everyone recommends, but look at the sector breakdown. 26.7% is in information technology stocks, which isn't great if you're the type of investor who doesn't like volatility per se. Not only that, this is my M1 Finance account that holds my individual stock positions. It's not all tech stocks. I hold Boeing, Disney, Beyond Meat, Costco, Ferrari, Otis Worldwide, and TJX companies. And going further, this lists all the 331 stocks Vanguard considers information technology. And right now I hold positions in just these six stocks. We have Apple, Microsoft, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and Square. And this is my portfolio allocation for the same six stocks. And if you add up all the percentages, it only comes out to 27%, which is basically the same as VO's 26.7% allocation to information technology. And going back to Randy's comment, he wrote S&P has been doing just fine while tech is down. Let's actually look at the chart. I mean, sure, S&P 500 is up 13.55% since the start of 2021, but tech as a whole is doing just fine. If you look at the Nasdaq 100's year-to-date performance, the tech index is still up 8.174%. I mean, it's lagging the S&P 500, sure, but I hardly call that being down. And this is a list of my individual stock positions ranked from unrealized gains. And right now, five of the six tech stocks I've invested in are in the green with only MasterCard down by only less than 2%. So to respond to your comment, Randy is crazy volatile, but I'm loving it because it's giving me great opportunities to lower my cost basis for my long-term positions. And short-term fluctuations, they don't really bother me. And I'm confident that my tech holdings, they're going to beat the S&P 500 in the long run. We'll also go back to your comment in 2031. And finally, yes, I already am, but really finally, no. Just stop using emojis and comments. And I'm sorry for putting on the spot, Randy, but I just wanted to explain myself a bit better to you. And this is to apologize for everyone else watching, but I'm really bad at transitions, so what the hell? We're in June right now, so let's go over the numbers to see how my portfolio performed for the month of May. I think that was a pretty smooth transition, but to start things off, my portfolio finished May with a total portfolio balance of $39,778.70, which is a 9.81% increase from April, but it's mainly due to me depositing $3,860 to max on my Roth IRA contributions before tax day. And that brought my total deposit to $30,070. With these two numbers, we can calculate my total portfolio gain, which is now sitting at $9,708.70. I mean, damn, I guess you're right, Randy. Those pesky tech stocks, they lost me almost $306. But moving ahead, I received dividends from Costco, Apple, MasterCard, and Ferrari in May. Not sure why Ferrari took back $1.79, but the total dividends for May, it came out to $6.52, which is just enough money to get me a large order of Five Guys Cajun fries. Hopefully in June, we'll get enough dividend income to buy me a double bacon cheeseburger, large Cajun fries, with a large Diet Coke, but we'll see. Moving ahead, I have $2,455.52 in cash uninvested, but we come to my portfolio return, so now let's finally answer the question that Randy really wants to know, and to see if my portfolio is beating the S&P 500, and this is what I'm up against. Since starting my M1 Finance portfolio, the S&P 500 at the same time has gained 46.33%, and here's how my portfolio has done 35.16%, or an annualized return of 12. 78%. I mean, yikes. I think I owe you an apology, Randy, for what I said earlier. I mean, my bad. But no matter. Even with my less than impressive return compared to the S&P 500, I'm still going to be a millionaire when I'm 6 years old because I'll have almost $1.4 million when I retire. And that's without me having to deposit any more money and just letting my current portfolio balance grow as is for the next 30 years or so. 
So I can't complain, I guess. But let's finish off, as always, with some YouTube statistics. No money from YouTube, as always, but subscriber count has been going up. And I ended May with 741 subscribers, up 6% since April. Now that was everything that has happened in May, and let's see if we can finish off June with a portfolio balance over $40,000. And remember when I said I'm bad with transitions, I'm equally bad with ending a video. But that's all I got for today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you liked it, and sub if you loved it. Also, there's links below to claim your free $30 when you sign up to M1 Finance. But with all that said, happy investing. I'll catch you all next time with more financial shenanigans.